Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Master Paul. I'm very honored to be connecting with you today. It is April 25, excuse me, May 25, 2017. And this live stream is the, uh, the first that I have done in a while on the subject of something that is truly not understood that well. There are many that think they understand what is forgiveness, what is the power of forgiveness, uh, how uh, they, they believe they are doing forgiveness uh, and forgiveness practice every day in some cases. But the reason I chose this subject matter today, the, that forgiveness is the spiritual key to help health and happiness, is because of the, uh, the lack of understanding, I guess is a good way to put it, on how to conduct a truly valuable uh, and beneficial forgiveness practice. There are many areas in which we can ask for forgiveness that have nothing to do with an individual pain or suffering that we might be um, experiencing or might have uh, irritation towards another. Um, and today we will delve into some deeper understandings of different uh, the different ways that we have created blockages in our life and how we can work with forgiveness to help eliminate those blockages as much as possible. <clears throat> you will discover uh, through this live stream today that the power of forgiveness is literally the key that lets you out of jail. It is one of the very few um, things that can bring about one of the highest levels of peace and the highest levels of contentment and relaxation with your life um, and yet it is so under misunderstood and uh, misused or underused so certainly there is ample room for some additional wisdom and education on this and i hope that you stick around for this entire time because we will be uh, doing quite a bit of practice and um, you can measure where you're at today and where you're at as you move forward <clears throat> because everyone has significant blockages of some level maybe it's health maybe it's emotions maybe it's a, a form of a grief or sadness maybe it is a problem with one of our parents maybe it's a uh, where we were abused at some point in our life uh, there's many possibilities of, of, of that but there's so many deeper ones that we're going to be covering today as well and all the areas that uh, that if not addressed actually do bring quite a bit of problems to our life. So uh, I look forward to serving you with that. And so I'm glad this live stream is working. Um, I've been having troubles. I'm not sure uh, what actually it is, but I'm actually <laughs> relegated to, to having to give my phone and the, the 4G network and, uh, and Facebook and all the interconnectivity. I literally have to do a blessing to clear the, the uh, Shen Qi Jing blockages just so that we can have a trouble-free feed. And I'm asking humbly for heaven to work with us so that this doesn't get cut off 10 minutes in as it has done in this last week or so. So thank you for all those that are joining. Uh, welcome Susan, welcome Candy Cornett, welcome Johnny Mambode, uh, welcome Richard Amodio, welcome Lila, uh, Aloha Kristen Strachan, welcome Anne-Marie Stewart, welcome Richie, Always enjoy Richie's posts, lots of uh, valuable uh, insights and heartfelt comments. Also welcome to um, Shelly, welcome Angie Taylor, welcome to uh, Nick, Nick Corey, and welcome Janine, and welcome Lisa. And welcome Nancy Lynn, welcome Ali, welcome Becky Lafave, aloha to everybody. Thank you also for sharing. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's live stream. You are, uh, you are the, the delivery system, if you will, of this information uh, on the cancer that I spoke about yesterday. Um, I will be talking, you know, giving people uh, deeper understanding of that on Saturday, June 10. 
And so please keep in mind that um, that video. You can uh, right click on it and drop that URL that pops up, which is the website address, uh, into anybody's email, anybody's um, Facebook page, anywhere. Um, all of us, I do believe all of us know somebody who is suffering from that condition. And if you save somebody's life, imagine your good virtue. So please uh, be one of those that save somebody's life. Um, welcome, Tammy. Welcome also to Dana Knapp. I haven't seen CJ pop in there yet. I'm sure she'll pop in soon enough. <clears throat> and so as we allow other souls to join us, let us go ahead and connect. Bring our hands together. Uh, much like a prayer position, soul light, soul service, hand position. But we drop the left hand in front of the heart center. Keep the right hand gently pointed towards heaven. Let us fully connect that we can be of greater uh, alignment. Close your eyes. Dear beloved Mother Earth, dear beloved Father Heaven, all layers of the divine down source, beings of light, serving the plan of the light side. Dear our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, we love you all, honor you all, we appreciate you all, respect you all, and we thank you for your unconditional service to our soul journey, for your life-saving service, your protection, your guidance, and your wisdom. We ask for your presence today to assist each and every one of us to open our hearts more to the power and significance to the spiritual wisdom of a deep and understanding forgiveness. Dear the soul of the ten da, the greatest qualities, the greatest virtues. Could you please come at this time? The countless uh, blessings, heaven, in the ten da calligraphies. Could you please come at this time? Offer your guidance, wisdom, and insights as we work through this forgiveness, through this wisdom today. I am most humbled, most grateful. Thank you. Do the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes. Love you, honor you, respect you. Please turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to join with us as we chant to connect heart to heart, soul to soul. All those that are new watching for the first time, this is a blessing. Make a request. Everybody else, we can offer service. Let us begin. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula. Lula ha li lula, lula ha li lula. Wo ai wo xin her ling, wo ai chun ran li, wang li ying rong her mu shir shang, shang ai ping on a se. Song I ping on her say, I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li, Lula. Lula ha li lula, lula ha li lula. Wo ai wo xin her ling, wo ai chun ran lei, wang ling rong 
儿母是生，相爱平安的谁？相爱平安的谁 ？I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join heart. And souls together, love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how! Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, welcome to all those that have just entered.、Uh, thank you for joining us today. Welcome, Kate and Nicole. Welcome also to Deborah Anderson, and welcome to Diane Wooten.、Uh, anybody else that I missed you, please forgive me. Thank you again for sharing and joining us today. One of the things that happens over time as a、uh, spiritual aspirant、um, is that the ability to communicate and hear heaven at the same time. Can happen. It happens when we open our spiritual channels, and、uh, spiritual channels are basically、uh, channels with which heaven communicates with us. When we are far from heaven, we suffer,、uh, and the suffering shows up in the form of anything that is not bringing you health and happiness. For each one of us, there are those particular areas in our life that come up to challenge us occasionally. Welcome, Michelle, and welcome, Jane Youngblood. And these challenges can often be、um, hurtful, and、uh, they can be long-standing. They can be、uh, debilitating in some cases, and. We often, with these challenges, we don't have solutions. We don't have、um, ready answers, and we consult others. We try to find answers. Sometimes, sometimes we just learn to live with it, whatever it is. Could be physical pain. We learn to live with it. It could be uh, uh, a relationship with、uh, a loved one, a family member, that no matter what, it just doesn't get better. It could be a.、Um, A relationship with self, where you just can't seem to forgive yourself for what you did or did not do.、Um, there are many ways in which <clears throat> we create or hold on to suffering,、um, and when our spiritual channels are not open, we cannot hear heaven's guidance. My teacher is、uh, Master Shah, and one of the things that he says very often. In any of his retreats, is that when you call Jesus, when you call Buddha, when you call God, when you call、uh, any anyone from the soul world to assist you, they come. But when we are in suffering,、um, we very often cannot hear. And one of the things that my teacher explains, Master Shah, explains is that when heaven comes. And we are saying, "Please help me, please." You know, I'm suffering. Master Shah would say, "Heaven comes," and they say the words, "Have you understood why you are suffering, my son, my daughter?" <laughs> Have you understood the reasons for your suffering? Have you asked forgiveness? But see, we can't hear that because we are in a place of deep suffering. So forgiveness is much like having a very big bulldozer with a huge shovel on it and digging out volumes of dirt that have covered us up and kept us from connecting to heaven and our higher true self. <laughs> having a few allergies, I think I ate something last night that was not good for me. And forgiveness is not limited to a relationship,、uh, to、uh, 
what this or that person did to you, you'll actually, you will find that almost all, I say almost all because I'm sure there's room for more, but almost all of our uh, sufferings come from not being in the right place at the level of the heart, at the level of soul, in opposition to what is called the ten da. So let me explain further because that might not make a lot of sense to you guys. We've had a few more people join us, so welcome also uh, to Michelle. Welcome Julia Lawrence. Uh, I'm so grateful that you're here as a newbie. Hopefully you enjoy this. Welcome Kayla. Welcome Don Brown. Haven't seen you in a while, Don. Good to see you here. Welcome Missy Dodd. And anyone else I missed, uh, welcome. So, Master Shah is, is in a beautiful soul because he wants to bring to humanity ways of waking up. And he teaches love, he teaches forgiveness. But how do you go deeper? And, and what does that mean? So he also has brought to us what is called the ten da, or the ten greatest. Ten greatest what? Ten greatest qualities is the word that he refers to on a consistent basis. I like to refer to them as virtues myself. Ten greatest virtues. Now, we're, this program today is talking about forgiveness. So why am I bringing up the ten da, or the ten greatest qualities or virtues? Because when we look at the lack of the ten greatest qualities and virtues, we can very clearly see where we need to do forgiveness. Because it is these trespasses that we have brought upon ourself by not acting out in the highest qualities, in thoughts, words, and actions, and by not acting out for our own health and wellness by empowering these qualities, virtues and by harming others by uh, misalignment by not uh, um, operating in the ten da and the ten greatest qualities what are the ten greatest qualities they are the greatest love the greatest forgiveness the greatest compassion now, I'm going to come back to each of these and, and we're gonna uh, put a little more emphasis on them specific to forgiveness the greatest compassion, the greatest light. These are qualities, virtues. The greatest uh, humility. The greatest harmony. The greatest flourishing. Flourishing. The greatest gratitude greatest service and the pinnacle of these qualities that is achieved when we enhance these in our life is the greatest enlightenment <laughs> what in inhibits us from being healthy and happy what inhibits us from moving forward um, where we get stuck is a misalignment to these qualities on some level for example the greatest love how many of us show of hands you can hit the happy buttons uh, do not operate in the greatest love in our thoughts and words and actions are our thoughts always filled with love for every soul that we cross are our actions infused with love I know I'm not always in that place. I'm constantly being challenged. You, I'm sure, are constantly being challenged. When we are not operating with our thoughts, words, and actions in the greatest love, our actions, thoughts precede the words and the actions. So when we are not operating with that as the highest intention, when was the last time you offered yourself love? I love myself. Try it. Put your hands over your heart. Tell yourself, I love myself. I truly love myself. I am awesome. 
I deserve to love myself. Measure the comfortability of that for yourself. Was it very easy? Zero issue? Was it like, ah, feels a little false, feels a little pushed? That reflects how open your heart is. When we have a lack of love for self, we bring that lack exteriorly in our thoughts and our words and our actions towards others. This creates spiritual debt. This is an opportunity for forgiveness. So when we, when we offer a lack of love to others, sometimes anger, sometimes many other emotions, uh, these obviously are opportunities for forgiveness. The next da is the greatest forgiveness. Greatest forgiveness. Da Quan Shu is the Mandarin Chinese word for it. When Master Shah released these to us, he released them in Mandarin Chinese. Da Quan Shu means the greatest forgiveness. Do we forgive ourselves for um, leaving that good relationship or for not doing enough to save? Uh, uh, a relationship not doing enough to communicate better with that parent before they left earth um, do we forgive ourselves for uh, not to for you know if, if somebody close to us died passed away or an animal died or passed away and we weren't there to make that uh, to do that one special thing that could have made the difference okay do we forgive ourselves when we do not forgive ourselves, we are basically saying, um, I don't really trust God. I don't really believe God. Why is that? How could I say something so, so bold and blatant? Because at least from the perspective that I've ever been taught, which I believe is the highest perspectives, our beloved Creator loves us unconditionally. It is a false teaching that the Creator's love is conditional. So if our Creator loves us unconditionally, which is what I choose to believe, and I believe it's accurate, then why would we not love ourselves unconditionally? Why would we not forgive ourselves? We are holding ourselves back. We are keeping our hearts closed. Forgiveness can be to self in these examples. When we don't forgive ourselves, how much more difficult is it to offer forgiveness to others? A lot because when our heart is closed and somebody quote does something to us it's much easier to fall into the role of victimhood it's much easier to put the blame outside of us it's much easier to point the fingers and say I'm never going to forgive you because you hurt me but someone with an open heart who has already worked on forgiving themselves who loves themselves the first two qualities uh, is much more in a position to recognize that that soul that brought that suffering probably didn't do it purposely. The personality may have some issues, but the soul itself was really wishing that the personality didn't do it. Now, I want to I clarify this because some people are confused when I say this. You are a soul having a physical experience. But so is that person over there that you point the finger at that blamed, uh, that did something to you and you're blaming them because you're the one that was on the receiving end and you can't forgive them. This is an example. Every soul is exactly that, a soul. The, the soul is not the personality. The, person with, the personality is the person with a name that, quote, hurt you, okay? We're going to say that we're the victim and they're the victimizer. But the truth is, they're a soul that this personality has developed, and it's the personality that brought that uh, unpleasantness. The soul, on the other hand, the boss of that personality, is shaking its head going, please, please don't hurt this person. I don't want this karma. I don't want to have to deal with this for more and more lifetimes. So you must forgive yourself and then you can start to see with clear eyes that anybody that, quote, harms you, certainly from the level of soul, that's not their intention. The personality does not know better. 
So you have to offer the next quality, which is compassion. The third da is da zi bei, the greatest compassion. You can offer compassion to others for when they act out and bring harmful thoughts, words, and actions to us because you may have already went through that. You have worked with love of self, forgiveness of self, and now you are being compassionate with yourself. Aloha and welcome, Alex Morgan. Thanks for joining us. So when we offer compassion to self for holding on to these judgments and these criticisms and these lacks of forgiveness and this lack of love, we give compassion to ourself. Then we can be compassionate for those that are unpleasant towards us. Also, our compassion can grow for those that we see that are suffering, that are going through great um, struggle and strife in their life. Compassion is not something that is learned. Compassion comes when the heart opens. And the heart goes through processes of opening and closing dependent upon your efforts in purifying your thoughts, your words, and your actions. The ancient wisdoms from all time teach the same thing. Watch your thoughts, watch your words, watch your actions. Be very careful. Your thoughts hurt you. Your words hurt you. Your actions can all hurt you. When we don't love ourselves, don't forgive ourselves, do not have compassion towards ourself, we are hurting ourself. We bring that hurt self to, to the outside and create spiritual debt. None of this is helping anybody, obviously. So efforts towards aligning to the ten da aligning to these greatest qualities can obviously only serve us, but it begins with acknowledging them first. So compassion uh, is something that we truly need to have towards our self. Catch yourself throughout the day um, being uh, in a place where you're not honoring yourself, being in a place where you might be putting yourself down, be compassionate to yourself for not completing that task, not completing that responsibility, whatever it may be. Love yourself. Forgive yourself because that's what your creator would do. Your creator would say, I love you. I forgive you. There is nothing truly to forgive. I have great compassion for you. Continue to stand up. Continue to grow, my son, my daughter. That's the heart of the creator. The Creator does not have judgments or criticisms towards us. Again, those are false belief systems that are designed to bring fear and control. Fear and control doesn't feel good. Does anybody like fear? Does anybody like control? Is there anything about that that resonates with you? Anything about that that opens your heart? If you have received at any point in time teachings that teach you uh, that that your creator is jealous or mean or you have to do something to receive the creator's love question it question it with your heart does this make me feel good if i have fear of my creator is that open my heart to the creator it's unlikely that it does so many of the wisdom that has been brought to humanity has been prostituted so to speak to induce fear and control so that money can be extracted from people and a variety of other things the original wisdom and teachings were were not brought to humanity with that intention the original wisdoms and teachings were full of love compassion light all of these qualities that i'm discussing right now it is unfortunately uh, man that has changed them to bring about fear and control. So have compassion for yourself, have love and forgiveness for yourself, and release any of the previous teachings that are not opening your heart. It's a suggestion. Whatever you want to do is good for you. It's just based on uh, common sense in most cases. Welcome Anne-Marie Love. Welcome also to Yvonne. Um, the fourth quality is Da Guang Ming. Mandarin Chinese, it means the greatest light. What is the greatest light? I was really um, smiling this morning as I flipped through my, the Facebook uh, comments that were, they just landed on my page. Uh, I've been blessed. We're over 2,000 souls have wanted to connect with me to receive 
um, whatever wisdom uh, can come through these live streams. And so I get to see many of their feeds come through on the home page. And I would say that now, for the first time, because I've been watching them for a while, but for the first time, there is more light coming through in the comments than complaining, than uh, um, whining, if you will. Um, there's still quite a bit of that out there. And, and when I have time, I remark and offer suggestions to convert the thinking a bit. But I am seeing a lot more positive comments. This is an example of light. The greatest light is that which emanates from us towards self and towards others. Our light is only as bright as is open our heart. Our heart is only as open as our love for self, forgiveness for self, compassion for self, and our thoughts, words, and actions outside of us filled with love, forgiveness, and compassion. Now, I know it's hard. I'm, it's hard for me. It's hard for everybody. I'm not saying I'm even close to being a good at this. All of us are on this path and we're sweeping away the steps as we go up them. And the steps as we go, because we're going up because it's not easy, right? But as we go up, the steps are cluttered with all of the debris, the shrapnel, the sharp barbs of metal and glass, broken glass, that represent all the times we have not acted out in love, not offered forgiveness, not offered compassion, light, and the other uh, greatest values I'm coming to. Those are the shrapnel in front of us. Why are they in front of us? We created them from this and all time when we failed to offer these qualities to others. When we failed to offer these qualities to self, they are in front of us so that that can be swept away with these same qualities that we have failed to offer. We have the tool of forgiveness to do this, but we must recognize that if it is in front of us, it is for a reason, and we have been empowered to clear it. Greatest light is so important. How many of you have went to work or, or went through the mall or walked around and somebody that you don't know offered you a beautiful smile and it changed your, uh, your perspective in that moment? That is an example of the greatest light. It was unconditional service to another. The reason they were able to do that was at least for that moment, their heart was open. They had kept open their spiritual channels. Our channels, as I started out with, can be blocked. Heaven is always communicating with us. Heaven is always guiding us to make higher, better choices. But we cannot hear them when we have this clutter of our stuff uh, that we tend to wallow in and recapitulate. If we are uh, uh, complaining over and over and over to our friends, our, our peers, whatever, really what we're doing is we're just massaging our ego. We're not, uh, we're not really solving anything. Um, and we appreciate those friends that just listen. Uh, and sometimes the friends offer suggestions. That's great and all. If you are moving towards self-love, self-forgiveness, self-compassion, forgiveness of others, etc., then by all means share. But don't do it so that you can be, oh, you poor thing, poor you. No, that's just massaging your ego and staying in a place of helplessness, staying in a place that is not serving you to grow. And you will, according to the laws of karma, continue to receive unpleasant experiences until such time as you awaken. So all of these bring those kinds of opportunities to us. The next of the ten da is the greatest humility. How often do you even hear that word, humility? Very rarely. It's not something that is spoken about in, in almost all forums that you'll find yourself in, whether it's talking with friends on the phone, Facebook, uh, at the mall, going to your, your organization that you belong to, any religious belief systems. They rarely, if ever, talk about the subject of humility. But in Master Shah's wisdom and teaching, he says it's one of the most important, one of the highest, most important of the ten qualities, because without it, you'll simply stay stuck. Why is the greatest humility so important? How many times has your ego brought harm to others? There's a great deal of opportunity for forgiveness in that. There is so much opportunity for forgiveness when 
ego shows up. And ego is so subtle. It can show up in 20 different areas of our life without us even blinking an eye. Ego is my car. Ego is I'm right, you're wrong. Ego is, yeah, I'll listen, but I don't really care what you think. Ego is <clears throat> um, saying something, but thinking something different. Agreeing to their face, but um, uh, you know, saying something negative in your head. Ego has so many layers. It is huge. My teacher, Master Shah, when he offers blessings to his to his uh, his students, the ones that that want to to be of service and, and receive uh, healer transmissions, every time. He offers the teaching. You are not doing this. You have received a transmission. You are serving. If you take credit for this, if you are not humble, your power will be diminished and you could lose this ability to serve. You must always be humble and give credit to the Creator. That is the one that transmitted the power to Master Shah. That's the one that was able to transmit it to you. Humility is the key to the highest power humility is the key to enlightenment how many times have your thoughts lack of humility ego your words eh, duh, judgments criticisms gossip that's ego guys how many times could we ask for forgiveness for that countless times countless 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 times so people say well I did my forgiveness practice this morning you know I asked for forgiveness for harming all souls okay that's like saying you know I you know I uh, I got up this morning yeah not much difference when we do forgiveness there are layers that we can attune to you can take one of these ten das, one of these ten greatest qualities or virtues, and each day, or choose a week, and during that week, you could just focus on increasing your love or your forgiveness or your compassion or your light. You can look for all the times when you are not offering love or compassion or forgiveness but just choose one for that week so that you can really attune to the areas that it shows up and you do forgiveness in the moment is the ideal time oh dear God please forgive me for this lack of compassion at this time okay when you uh, start catching yourself in the moment spiritual debt is not created at that at that time erased when you catch your negative thoughts oh, sorry please forgive me Spiritual debt is erased. It is not added in. In order to rise to the top of the mountain, you can't keep digging a hole and jumping in. You have to fill the hole. Okay? You have to do your part. And filling in the hole is catching yourself uh, when you're acting out in the wrong way. That's what allows... Because because <laughs> if you... If you um, uh, uh, don't fill if you don't create a hole you can continue to go higher 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 humility i could go on a long time there's so much opportunity for growth there the next da the greatest virtue the greatest quality is harmony harmony is um, something that we have little understanding of harmony is lacking significantly with just about everybody in this world and it is reflective of another word called oneness it is reflective of no ego it is reflective of let's work together it is reflective of i will listen to your perspective and honor it please listen to my perspective and honor it and let's find a place in the middle where we are both our needs are met where it's win-win and we work together harmony uh, 
is easy to identify, but difficult in many cases to accomplish. Why? Karma, spiritual debt. If you have difficulty as a, as a leader in your group or as someone trying to create homogeny where people are, are to come together and, and accomplish one, one goal, uh, if you have difficult harm, uh, inharmonious relationships, very simple. You or your ancestors had brought about inharmonious conditions for whatever there is inharmoniousness about. If it's at the job, you or your ancestors brought about inharmonious conditions at previous times. Do you think that's an opportunity for forgiveness? Absolutely. This world is the equivalent of a massive lack of harmony. Uh, you can see it everywhere and it shows up in the in the so many ways but literally if humanity was in harmony we would have perfect days weather specifically we would have perfect weather days there would not be a day where it wouldn't be perfect temperature everywhere at all times um, we just would not have significant uh, uh, maladies with the weather it, it is a reflection of inharmoniousness. All of Mother Earth changes are reflections of, of a lack of harmony. Do you think there's a possibility for forgiveness for our part and our ancestors' part in any lack of harmony we might have brought to Mother Earth or to any souls? There is significant uh, places where we bring inharmoniousness to every area of our life. The seventh of the ten das is greatest flourishing flourishing is not a commonly used word we typically understand that flourishing means oh everything is is coming in in abundance right flourishing means abundance well yes flourishing is a word that reflects every aspect of your life literally radiating and emanating health and happiness health and happiness in your relationships health and happiness in your personal emotional health physical health mental self very positive health and happiness in your finances absolutely health and happiness with everyone you work with and the job itself health and happiness with every area of your life that is flourishing it is not money how many times have we created a lack of flourishing a lack of success for others a lack of supporting someone in their relationships how many times have we uh, broken down opportunities for others to have health how many times have we broken down opportunities for others to have a lack of, of happiness in their life even just speaking negatively diminishes someone's happiness it could diminish someone's health as well so there are plenty of opportunities for forgiveness there but let's look at ourselves how many of us have trouble with receiving wealth and abundance mentally emotionally maybe we grew up in uh, an environment that was not filled with a great deal of flourishing so there are uh, just we just don't believe we believe we have to work hard and that this is the amount's going to come in and that's it and i'm just going to have to deal with it and that, uh, too bad um, sometimes we have the wrong mindsets attitudes and beliefs around deserving of health and happiness in every area of our life a lot of it unfortunately stems from root teachings from our parents from our peers from our friends from our uh, belief systems from school uh, these all teach us uh, in many different ways lack and limitation they 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 teach us in many ways uh, fear and um, that in order to receive you have to do you have to do this to receive that and the doing usually is a, a physical based action or a mind based action and then there's competition in there so competition puts me above you that's not oneness that's not harmony and so all of this creates a pushing down effect um, and and rarely the people that actually get to the top are good people uh, many of them are thank goodness nowadays but there's a big chunk of them that are not so good they got there by pushing down others and so when we have a lack of flourishing oftentimes it's because of accepting 
what has been taught us from from early on so we want to be able to um, forgive ourselves, be compassionate to all those that have taught us this uh, false teachings and false information love ourselves and go I completely love and deserve I completely forgive myself for disallowing flourishing in my relationships and my uh, health disallowing flourishing and forgive yourself for disallowing this ask for forgiveness for causing a lack of flourishing elsewhere the greatest does as you can start to see we're not quite done yet but as you can start to see each one of these qualities greatest love greatest forgiveness greatest compassion the greatest light the greatest humility the greatest harmony and now we just discussed the greatest flourishing you can see how deep one can go with requesting forgiveness and how many times we can make uh, imbalanced conditions in our life by not just paying attention to these qualities just by paying attention to these qualities we are clearing our spiritual blockages just by paying attention to these qualities we we are always being given the opportunity to ask for forgiveness which then clears the spiritual debt which then brings more flourishing which then brings more of all the other qualities the next quality which is the eighth of the ten da is greatest gratitude da gan un greatest gratitude thank you master shah thank you heaven for bringing this wisdom through master shah to humanity at this time to service at the highest levels possible because not only has he brought this wisdom that i am now able to share with you but he has brought empowerments that uh, that can dramatically enhance your uh, release of these kinds of blockages and your health and wellness and i'll come to them more in a little bit but these are called the ten da cards these are loaded with spiritual power uh, the kind of power that can literally um, put you on a rocket ship to the highest transformation and there's opportunities today for those that stick around long enough to hear about the opportunities to own these for yourself the eighth da is the greatest gratitude the greatest gratitude oh gosh how can you you know there are so many areas in our life that we lack gratitude when we really should have it how many of you wake up in the morning as a practice okay I want to see I want to see uh, uh, um, those that actually do this as a practice and the first thing out of your mouth is gratitude thank you thank you my beloved creator whatever it is for you for me thank you God thank you Tao. thank you source thank you master Shah thank you my heavens teams and Sherfus. thank you for everything that I've received in this lifetime I am beyond honored to have this place I live this opportunity to serve every day I say that with my heart it took practice it's not something that you know I've, I have forgotten many times but I am pretty good every day now you have to choose to do this every day when you start your day out with gratitude you can start to go deeper thank you for that I have a paycheck thank you that I have eyes that when I open I can see the ceiling I can see my spouse next to me I can see thank you God thank you for this breath there are so many others that can't breathe that suffer thank you for that thank you for so many things if you keep this on the tip of your tongue you will discover how many times you are not in a place of gratitude for all the incredible things that you have it is gratitude and the uh, and the recognition of gratitude that can change your world here's the big teaching on gratitude though remember the analogy I was giving you the visual about going up the steps right and all this clutter on the steps was all of our stuff where we had not learned our lessons where we had caused um, uh, 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 spiritual debt or karma for ourselves on our journey because we lacked love forgiveness compassion light uh, humility too much ego we lacked gratitude all of these things we we, we you know we espouse them in our thoughts words and actions 
And so they come to us. And you step on that next step and you hit a sharp piece of glass. Ow! That really hurt. Somebody hit my car. Uh, somebody made me trip and I hurt my back. I flipped and, and I fell and, and, and hurt my head and now my neck is, you know, that's that sharp piece of glass on that next step up. We all have our versions of that. How many of you have enough awareness to see that this was not an accident? This was an, a, a very specific event that was orchestrated by heaven and your spiritual debt. It came to you so that you could see the opportunity to clear it. It's hard to do in the moment because you just stepped on glass or a variation of that. But those that are truly working on soul growth, working to minimize the amount of time we spend here and maximize the amount of time we spend in heaven, those that are on that path look at every experience, even the stepping on glass, with gratitude. It takes practice. You don't jump and step on glass and say, thank you. You have to uh, uh, work at it to become conscious. But you say, thank you. I'm so sorry to the souls. I've obviously slipped and hurt myself because at some point in time, I or my ancestors have brought suffering to other people's necks. My neck hurts now, but I recognize this as an opportunity to ask forgiveness to heaven, to source, to all of the souls in all times whose neck I or my ancestors have brought harm or suffering to. I thank you for this, this opportunity, for this lesson. I will continue to improve and I will not make the same mistakes again. Um, this is an example of conscious awareness. Gratitude is not limited to all of the things like, I'm glad I can see, I'm glad I can breathe, I am grateful I have money coming in. No. Those that are truly looking to grow their spiritual enlightenment look for gratitude in everything and they ask forgiveness, especially when they notice the unpleasant things, when they step up and step onto the shrapnel of the next layer of our soul uh, enlightenment. And we see all of those things with love, light. We see them with the opportunity they provide us. We offer forgiveness with gratitude for the lesson. The ninth of the ten das is greatest service. Greatest service is something that is significantly lacking in this world. And I will not sugarcoat this. It's damn hard to always be in a place of service for others. Because if I'm always in a place of service for others, right? How can I even pay the bills? I mean, I got to take care of both the kids. I've got to, you know, uh, uh, come home, feed the, feed the wife, make the meal, uh, clean the house. I've got, got the job. I've got to deal with all that. And then all the stress from this, this, that, and the other. And I got caught in the traffic jam. Blah, 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 blah. I don't have time to be service to others. This is a monkey mindset that was built for us by the teachings from the ground floor up. From the moment of birth all the way till now, the teachings have been stay busy, um, do your part, have a family, and uh, you know where we're at today. This kind of a mindset does not recognize the truth of our creation. And we, we are aspects of our creator. We are God expanded. Little pieces of it, I'll mind you. And we're working our way back to the heart of the divine so that we can... Uh, uh, return but between here and there we have this creator in us all of us equally zero inequality everyone is equal so the greatest service starts with that recognition and there is so much opportunity for forgiveness when we fail to acknowledge that basic basic truth and that person across from us that we have either a judgment or a critical thought about or a lack of compassion for or an ego thought, uh, uh, whatever it might be, service can happen with a positive thought.
Think about that for a moment. Was that taught you when you were born? Was that taught you by the parents, by the brothers and sisters, by your family friends? Was that taught you by the religious organization you belong to? Was that taught to you by any of the school systems that service can be offered at all times simply by maintaining a positive thought for yourself, for everybody else? Why? Because we're all one equally. This positive thought is just like a lightning bolt that shoots out to everybody around you. They will then in turn think more positively and that will keep going until there is a predominancy of positive energy. It's truly that simple. And that's how simple service is. So the greatest service broken down is staying in positivity. How do we stay in positivity? When the karma that has been surrounding us in this life brings us negative issues to relationships, brings the financial problems, brings the health issues, all of that is still whacking us over the head. So how do we stay in positivity? We do it in every moment as much as we can consciously remember to do it. We do it by watching our thoughts, our words, and our actions. We do it by saying forgiveness each and every time we operate out of the ten das towards anybody. We do it in the moment. And even if five of those possible 84,000 moments, because there's 84,000 seconds in a day, if there were 84,000 moments and you were only able to be positive in five of those 84,000 moments. This moment here, four hours later, that moment there, and so forth. That's a start. Tomorrow you work on 10 moments of being positive. You continue to recognize anything that's in front of you that is not enjoyable as an opportunity with gratitude. You bring forgiveness to the table and you continue this process of awakening. And staying in positivity. The tenth of the ten das is the greatest enlightenment. The greatest enlightenment happens as a result of manifesting these wisdoms and teachings every day, every moment, every hour, because it is the great beings of light that have preceded us, our beloved Jesus, our beloved Mother Mary, our beloved Kuan Yin and Buddha, our beloved Krishna, all of the beings of light that have preceded us. We know who they are. I don't need to mention them all. They have gotten to that level by doing these steps. They did not get there by harming others, speaking bad about others, thinking bad about others, jealousy, gossiping. Do you think they got there by that? Not going to happen. They got there by conscious communication on a moment to moment basis with themselves first because we are a reflection we bring to the outside of us what we do inside of us by taking care of ourselves with love forgiveness compassion light humility uh, harmony harmonize ourselves grateful grateful for all parts of us uh, uh, service service to ourself through uh, through employing these ten das in every aspect of our life we then radiate that light the greatest light and everything else around us will reflect that individually it'll just start bunk, 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 all the stars when you are that towards your kids it's far greater than any teaching you can give them this is just a teaching this does not cause it for any of you it is the activation of it in your life that causes it so let us offer our gratitude to heaven and if it's comfortable for you to master shah for he is the one that was the receiver of these ten das and this wisdom that was shared thank you heaven and thank you master shah so what he did to empower all of us is he put this in a book which you can get uh, this book is called soul over matter this is information is not to sell the book uh, it's just a place you can find this information if you're interested. And he co-wrote this with a guy named Adam Markell. And Adam Markell is a financial guru. Master Shah is the one that taught Adam that it's not mind over matter, Adam. It's soul over matter. And Adam's, ah, I get it. 
And so now he understands that when we change things at the level of soul using these ten das, you can transform every area of life. And so Master Shah speaks in there about the ten das. Master Shah created these ten calligraphy cards. The greatest love, the greatest forgiveness, the greatest compassion, the greatest light. So I'll give you one example. This one's called Da Quan Chu. This is not just pretty art, guys. This literally is a miracle healer in your hand. Da Quan Chu, this is what he put on the back of it. Da means greatest. Quan Chu means forgiveness. Da Quan Chu means the greatest forgiveness. Uh, totally relax. This is, he teaches you how to use it. Totally relax. Dear Da Source Calligraphy, Da Quan Chu, that's what this calligraphy is. Please heal me and rejuvenate me. Transform my life. I am very grateful. And then you would chant Da Quan Chu while you do what's called tracing. You would touch your fingers together like this. Okay, all five fingers. And then you trace the, uh, the shape that is in front of you. You follow those lines. Now, why does that work? Sounds kind of, well, would it really work? I don't know. Well, if you have been following this for a while, you would know that soul, uh, soul healing, Tao healing, is extraordinary. And Master Shah is a world-renowned healer. He has empowered objects, things, books, uh, and these uh, to offer tremendous, tremendous blessings. For those that attended just a few days ago, I offered a blessing with this book, uh, and there was at least seven, well, probably about ten people that said, you know, that their uh, suffering went down roughly 70%. In a four-minute blessing from a book, this has a million times more power than that book in it. A million times. I'm not kidding. And so if somebody owns one of these, they can uh, empower that particular virtue or quality more. Let's say that you have issues with forgiveness, which is the subject matter uh, we opened up today. You would say, okay, Master Paul, I would like to get this calligraphy card. Uh, the calligraphy card is $50, okay? And you could say, okay, I've received this calligraphy card. I would like to uh, uh, release my blockages to forgiveness. I have big, big blockages. So this is how you connect. Dear Divine Tao and Source, dear uh, the blessings put in this card, could you please, as I trace you, clear blockages of my forgiveness with this other soul? And as you are tracing, What's happening is heaven is coming through this card, just like heaven came through this book and reduced people's sufferings by 70% in four minutes. Um, it can do the same thing through these cards, but quite a bit more. And so you trace it, and you trace for five, ten minutes, whatever, and your heart will be more open. You're just going to feel better. You can do the same thing for uh, pain in your knee. There are all the souls whose knees in all lifetimes I or my ancestors have harmed. Please forgive me. I deeply apologize. I wish very much to, um, to ask for your forgiveness. I will not harm people's knees in the future. Dear forgiveness, uh, Da Quan Chu, please bless all the souls that I and my ancestors have harmed that are bringing this suffering to my knees. I can promise you, and I have no problem saying promise you, you trace this card 5, 10, 15 minutes, your knee pain will diminish. I have, I have seen it virtually every time. It would be shocked if you didn't have a result. Um, that's the kind of power that's in these cards. And you have one card for each of these qualities. These are called the ten das. Now some people get all of them. All, and the honor fee is 500 for all of them. You can get them individually. You can choose to not get them at all. But you will discover that this is not just for you. You can actually offer blessings to other people. Your child comes to you. You break out one of the cards. Greatest love, greatest forgiveness. And you trace it on behalf of that child. They can literally have that suffering, whatever they're going through, go away. Let's say there's a bully at school that they're bullying the daughter. They're the soul of this bully by their name. Please come, the soul of my daughter, the soul of the relationship between the bully and my daughter. Please receive this blessing from Da Quan Shu. Please forgive each other. Because one of the reasons why the child is being bullied is because they were the bully. And so this offers blessings to clear those blockages, as an example. You can use this for virtually anything. Um, I don't know how to put uh, explanation into it without actually uh, you experiencing it. So, 
I am going to offer a blessing using this Da Quan Shu card to each of you, the greatest forgiveness. Um, I want you to choose something uh, in your life that you would like. If you have something that's measurable, choose that so that you know that a card can offer you blessings. Uh, choose something that is measurable, uh, physical pain, tightness, stiffness, or necks, or back, whatever it is. Remember, this applies to everything. It is not limited to the body. Everything, it will help. Uh, because heaven's not limited to helping the body. Heaven is, is in here. And so make your request. I will trace on your behalf. And you can also hear how I invoke uh, the blessings in here. Because if you want to be one of those that receives this, you just let me know. Okay? So prepare. Please repeat after me. Dear my beloved Creator, dear all beings in heaven, my name is, state your name, I love you from all my heart. I wish to ask for forgiveness for my lack of tenda qualities. Please forgive me for my lack of love, lack of forgiveness, my lack of compassion, my lack of light. Please forgive me for my lack of gratitude, my lack of humility. Please forgive me for my lack of harmony, my lack of service, and my lack of enlightenment. I ask most humbly for your blessings at this time for my request. Please bless me as appropriate. And now you state your request. What do you want? Measure it. If it's a pain or something measurable, what's the number? Ten is the worst. One or zero, excuse me, zero is it's gone. Please measure it so that you have a point of uh, a value afterwards. Okay. Finish your request. Now listen, as I invoke this, you will uh, understand how to do it yourself. Dear the soul of this Tenda greatest forgiveness card, the countless blessings placed into this card. I love you, honor you, respect you, thank you from my heart. Could you please offer me a blessing? Please offer all those watching, all those listening, a blessing for their request as appropriate. Please forgive them as appropriate for the suffering they might have caused others. I am very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I will hold the card up. You keep your eyes closed. Wherever you're at, sit up straight, back away from the back of the chair, feet flat on the floor. Keep your tongue touching the roof of your mouth. Touch your heels together if it's not uncomfortable. Prepare to receive. Relax your shoulders. Prepare to receive. Da Quan Shu, greatest forgiveness. Da Quan Shu, greatest forgiveness. Da Quan Shu, greatest forgiveness. Da Quan Chu, greatest forgiveness. I forgive you, please forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. I am tracing on your behalf. Silently in your heart, ask forgiveness for harming any souls specific to the area of your request. The more pure your request for forgiveness, the higher the blessings. Da Quan Shu, greatest forgiveness. Da Quan Shu, greatest forgiveness. Da Quan Shu. Greatest forgiveness. 
Da Kwan Shu Greatest Forgiveness I forgive you Please forgive me <clears throat> Bring love, peace, harmony Bring love, peace, harmony I forgive you Please forgive me Bring love, peace, harmony Bring love, peace, harmony Da Kwan Shu Please forgive my request Da Kwan Shu Please forgive my mistakes Da Kwan Shu Please bless the souls I have harmed Da Kwan Shu Please bless my soul I forgive you Please forgive me <clears throat> Bring love, peace, harmony Bring love, peace, harmony Ha, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So that was a three-minute blessing with a calligraphy card that I'm guessing about 30 to 50% of you are not even familiar with. So please share. What did you notice? What was your condition before? The name of it? The, uh, the level of suffering? And what is the level now? A three-minute blessing from a calligraphy card. Let's see if it made a difference. These can be honored for. Just uh, email me, Facebook me, whatever you need to do. You can request. I want the greatest compassion. I know that's a big blockage for me. I, my ego is too big. I need greatest humility. Um, forgiveness, you know, I have trouble. I've got blockages for giving people. That's the one I need. I just want to be enlightened. I'm happy with my soul journey. I just want to reach for enlightenment. I want the greatest enlightenment card. Which one resonates with you? Do you have a lack of gratitude? So the cards are only $50 each. They're very, very reasonable. You do have to pay like $5 for the shipping. Uh, and, and I'll ship it anywhere in the world for you. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you can get all of them if you want. If you do get all of them, all 10, then obviously the shipping's uh, complimentary. Uh, and, and I'll even get you a little uh, satchel to put them in, a little uh, Chinese uh, purse, if you will. That's very, very nice, very manly uh, or womanly, depending on what color you want. Um, but these, I tell you guys, these will save lives. These are not little hocus pocus things. Um, you have these when there are very difficult times, uh, uh, diseases, things of that nature. This is life-saving. Not kidding. Make sure if you have the money to get these. Um, I'm waiting for some of the sharing to see uh, what people are saying about the benefits. And I want to thank you for sticking around for this uh, little bit long live stream. I had to restart, so I lost about eight minutes there. We're about an hour ten right now. And I, and I appreciate you uh, for sticking around this long. Also, Julia, a newer person, thank you for sticking around this long. Hopefully I didn't keep you up too late. Um, <clears throat> oh, welcome, CJ. Thanks for joining us. You're very welcome for the blessings. And so, uh, <clears throat> PTSD anger words will be better now. Thanks. You're very welcome, Nick. There are blessings available, Nick, for PTSD, by the way. Uh, pretty extraordinary ones. You might want to consider those. Uh, you can connect with me if you do. 
Thank you, for Jean Janine, for telling me you requested something not measurable. I did offer blessings the last several days, very, very big ones. So most of you probably have reduced your sufferings quite a bit just from those. I don't know, didn't know if you would even have anything measurable to talk about today, but I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, uh, to do a blessing for you anyway, so that you all understood that value. <clears throat> all right. So enjoy your weekend. This weekend, I invite you to a workshop that I'm uh, to that I'm doing with Master Gina. Uh, in the Master Shaw's Tao Healing Center. The first one is a meditation to serve humanity. Okay, this is a two hour uh, uh, meditation that we'll be doing to serve humanity, uh, serve Mother Earth, excuse me, which includes humanity. Mother Earth needs us. The more people that join, the, gra the greater the power. Um, Sunday. Uh, Master Gina and myself are leading uh, honoring the ancestors literally half of everything good that's happened in your life is because of the ancestors and anything that's not good in your life uh, is also because of the ancestors 50% and either way <clears throat> when you honor them which there's a special way we'll show you how to honor them in this in this uh, Sunday workshop you can actually uh, return virtue to your ancestors so if you're returning to virtue to ancestors that do not have very good credit with you um, then you're clearing the spiritual debt so then your life gets better if they have been giving you their virtue and your life is already pretty good the gratitude to them fills up their virtue more they give more virtue to you so either way you fill up your virtue bank so it's a great way to honor the ancestors also, it's set up to honor Jesus, God, Buddha, Mother Mary. We're calling them Sherfus, our teachers. You can honor them also, give virtue back to them. It's a very spe a special and unique spiritual practice that allows us to return the virtue to heaven. And this will be done uh, for those that join on Sunday. That's from 12 to 4. And I, uh, Kristen is probably finding the links and posting them for you now. Uh, very, very reasonable honor fee. <coughs> so... Um, uh, contact me through Facebook Messenger. Just hit, you know, send a message to me, and uh, I can contact you that way. My my phone number and email and all that is at the bottom of my web page, asohiller.com. And Kristen usually uh, posts that on my behalf. Thank you again, Kristen. Give her a big hand. So love you, love you, love you. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you for your comments, and thank you so much for your sharing. Uh, thank you if you're new and you enjoy this. Please hit the subscribe button, and uh, you'll be notified when I go live. Most of the time, Facebook is kind of um, bipolar that way. Sometimes they don't do it. So thank you all. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye. Hopefully on the weekend if you come to my events.